Okay, welcome to the now Thursday, November 21st meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. And unless anybody has anything else to offer ahead of time, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. <laughs> Unanimous. <laughs> and we'll go ahead with the first application. Alley Art, 7779. Come up and have a seat. Thank you. I'm Bob Hannum. I'm, I'm uh, on the commission. I appeal your public arts commission. And uh, I want to thank you for encouraging our project. Our first project. First of many, I hope. Probably be nice to have a little light in the alley. That's yeah. Especially when the sun sets at three thirty. <laughs> Even during the middle of the day, it can use a little light. Yeah. It was the original intent, so we're we're very happy twenty years later to finally finish it. And describe the lighting you're proposing. Um, my colleague uh, Rob Hitzig was here last year in your last meeting, and. Um, what he described was um, we're going to start with very simple design, uh, white string of LED lights um, following the pattern of the swirl, as you might remember if you've been, been in there lately. It's a large uh, cast iron sculpture, 20 years old, about 10 feet above uh, ground level. And we're going to follow the swirl with a nice string of very small, they call them, um, I what they call them, but very small LEDs. And, uh, and we'll have blue bursts, they call them, uh, about uh, 10 or 12 of them along the 200 foot length. And uh, this is going to be just a start. We're going to do this by the end of the year with your approval. And uh, the owners of the, the owner of the buildings on both sides have, have approved this. Uh, in fact, um, he has donated the electricity for the usage. Uh, we're going to put it on a timer at your suggestion. Um, we're going to follow your guidance with the uh, timing that you suggested. Um, so this is just the beginning. We hope in the future to actually get our public school and private school art classes involved in designing further um, lights in there as well. Maybe uh, motion sensitivity, maybe, maybe um, more movement, uh, more color. So yeah, we're starting. You can make it look like the Chicago airport. We're going to make it very. We're going to make it very welcoming. Yeah. How are you fasting? Am I just going to go along? Are you going to wrap the wire? Or yeah, there's a, if you recall, there's a swirl of iron, right. the whole 200 foot length, and uh, we're going to follow that swirl with the white you're LEDs. You're just going to wrap around yep. the iron. Exactly. He and I, uh, Rob and I, are going to do it ourselves, keep the project cheap. Now I see there are three colors here green, white, brown. No, we're, we're selling on two colors of lights, the white uh, with the blue, but we're doing very dark um, wiring. And uh, I think you suggested, I know you suggested last time, make sure the, the wiring is dark. And um, that's what we've done. We're going to have dark, I think the white lights will be a black wire, and the blue lights we can get a dark brown or dark green wire, but they'll be dark. That'll, I think, it look nicer because it won't detract from the, the iron work. Exactly, exactly. I can't I see totally anything agree. in there anyway. <laughs> well, when it's lit, maybe yeah. it'll... Uh, yeah, no, I agree. And you indicated that you ha you're going to have a plaque later on. Yes. Yes, we have we kind, of, kind of three phases to this project. This is the beginning. By the end of the year, we'll have something simple, as I just described. By hopefully uh, s six months into next year, we'll have a nice little um, effort with the school systems to uh, increase the lighting and then by the end of the year we need to do some maintenance on the piece there's some flaking of the iron uh, which is natural over 20 years so we want to clean that up with um, um, 
sandblasting, coat it so it lasts a lot longer than 20 years that we've had before, and um, put a plaque on. The artist is uh, still very much alive and kicking and very, very um, supportive of this. And uh, we feel that all the public art in our town should have, uh, should recognize the artist. Where do you expect to put the plaque? Good question. I, I have no idea. No idea at this point, but uh, any recommendations from yourselves or from the building owner would be uh, totally. Um, I think it should go closer to Main Street. I think it Just would be in, really nice. In, in general, maybe yeah. so when you walk by, you can, yeah. you can see it. Yeah. You'll notice uh, if you walk by, there's, there's already a bronze plaque on the Main Street um, right around, right near that alleyway that recognizes the historic significance of one of those buildings. So I was thinking something around that area. Is there a specific design for the plaque, or is it proposed in, in this application? No, no, we haven't uh, presented that yet. We'll do that in the future. Do you expect to come back at that point? If you, if you think that's a good idea, we'd be happy to do that. What size is the plaque that's on there now? Um, the it's um, about ten inches square, I'd say, and it, again, it uh, recognizes the the history of the building. Okay. Um, the plaques we're looking for for we're thinking about for all of our public art. Excuse me. And there's about twenty pieces in our town, by the way. Um, is uh, something museum size, you know, five inches by three inches, something like that. That it's, would be metal. It's going to go in the alleyway, actually. Um, I don't think it, or just mounted somewhere yeah. at the entrance to yeah. the. To yeah, the I, would, I would love it right on either, the main street side of things. Either but, on the frame, because yeah. that building has a bay window that wraps, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that the width of the frame, but it, it may be possible to put it on a frame, which would, you would see it when you're walking down the sidewalk, yeah. or just at the edge of the brick. Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd be perfectly happy to put that in this. Well, this, that's what I was thinking. That's what I figured you might be. What, what size maximum? What, like yeah. 10 by 10? 10 by 12? That's, 10, yeah. 10 by 10. I, I was thinking about the size. If you think about a size of piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's eight by eleven. That's eight by 11. Yeah. Right. And it's got to be more than one letter because otherwise you can see it for three hundred feet away. <laughs> <laughs> I watched way too much TV the last two days. <laughs> I realized yesterday that you could. Watch 14 hours of real time political TV if you watch the hearings and then the Democratic debate, which I did a large part of. And are you okay? No. <laughs> <clears throat> it might be more exciting than watching design review, but. <laughs> That is important. That's the problem. Bob, where are you getting your funding from? Um, we have three sources that we're looking at. We get a little bit from the town, hopefully on a yearly basis, but, but that kind of depends uh, each year. It's not guaranteed. Um, we're also looking for public-private partnerships, and we're going to begin to seriously begin to talk to local business people in the next year. And then finally, fundraising. Thank you. Thank you. I will. How are you, kids? Better. Thank you. So what I said was it just a bronze color or dark color metal plaque up to a 10 by 12, let's go 10 by 12 size, may be installed at the entry to the alley, which describes the art project. Any mountings on a brick face will be located in the mortar joints of the brick. And you'll, you'll get a copy of this. 
and again, it gives you enough leeway. I mean, you can make it smaller, certainly smaller than that, but you want to have it big enough so you can actually read <laughs> the <laughs> script that you're going to put in the, in the plaque. Any other comments, questions, suggestions from anyone? Oh, the other thing I just up top, I said the wire color of the light strings would be a dark color, green or brown. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, suggestions? We'll go through the set of criteria. Pre elevate evaluation criteria. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. The application is acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. It is approved. Thank you and very this much. This is an administrative. Yep. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate your consideration. Yeah. And before you go, I get, need to get you to sign this. Sure. On the lower left, just above my name. Mm -hmm. Audra may have your permit tomorrow. You can ah. give the office a call. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I hope you get good enough weather to make it easy for the install. Thank you very much. <laughs> Grab those few days you get. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Come on up, Fred. Next good. application good 100 night. State Street. Capital Plaza. How are you all tonight? Less icy than we would have been Monday night. It's going to be after tonight. It's going to get real cold and icy again. Oh, really? Yeah. Tomorrow is supposed to be icky. Oh, great. So <laughs> describe your gates. They're, they're entrance and exit gates. Uh, we're putting them at the Taylor Street entrance and just inside the um, State Street entrance at the ends of the building so that they drive through can get in and out, uh, be 24-hour parking, paying. We've been shuttling all for a whole year, worse than ever, uh, three, four times a week, and we have no parking. Uh, we can't control it, so this is going to have to help us control the, the parking. People can still come in the other way, right? They can come any way they want, but they're going to have to pay when they come in. Uh, the first, I think there's eight spots, or seven spots on the bank side, and. Seven, six on the other will be 13. The bank won't, that'll be open for the bank. Yeah. Once they go through the gates, uh, they'll have to get a ticket just like you do any other parking area. But you be no cash. What if they just come off um, State Street? That's fine. If they go through the gate, they're going to get a ticket. But we're giving 15 minutes free. Anybody going in will have a 15 minute uh, grace period. Okay. Uh, the bank is going to have a 15 minute, anyways, and, or they can go to their drive up, or they can go in their side and not pay at all. Their side will be open all the time. They can do whatever they want with it. Our side is going to be monitored. We have people staying there overnight. Snowstorms, we can't plow. And What about the church? Church has a um, pass-through. We're going to have special cards for them. They will, they, I'm not sure if they've got 12. Their, their plot plan shows 12. But when they tell me what they actually have, they'll have the gates will be set up so that 12 people can enter. And park. The 13th will lock them out. You're going to put some kind of a barrier. I don't understand. If they're dropping gates. Yeah. They're toll gates. You know, right. Yeah. Like and if you go up behind the, uh, Court Street on the way back toward the State House, there's a big yeah, gate there. I, I, I understand like, the gates, but I don't under. I, I just. You got him on one entrance to what's a big free for all parking lot. It's on, bo it's on both entrances. Both entrances. Oh, State Street. There's two. Taylor Street and the other end. Yeah, open the whole. Did it, oh. Yeah, it should open it up. What I don't understand is Humble. how the bank people can access the bank That's area. That's the 15 minute 
free So they have pass. to get a ticket. People who mm -hmm. are using the Northfield Bank have to get a Everybody ticket. Everybody entering the gates will get a ticket. Okay. But if they're using the bank, they won't. And the bank, they're, they're, we're, we're thinking of doing things even with the city for about a month, giving them a parking so much of people get used to it. I, I missed the gates off. If you see right, yeah. Eric, where, yeah, right where it says not, drive through, I, right here. Right here. Yeah. I see them. That's, but my concern is, how are people going to get through to use the drive-through? They'll, they'll get a free ticket, and, they, and they'll go through here, and they go around here, or they're coming in this way. It's what they have to do now. They can't come in the, the gates here. They have to come in now, go all the way around, and come in this way. Mm -hmm. Or they come in Taylor Street and come in this way. Yeah, I understand for, for that. The first 15 minutes that. are free. Okay. When you go back out, you put your ticket If you're parking out here, the first 15 minutes will be but free. The, I understand that. I understand that. So the people who are using the drive through then are going to have to go through the ticket thing. Correct. So, they put their so ticket you get a ticket in. going through, and then you pay going out. Right. No cash. Credit card. We'll have pay, they call them POF, pay on foot, units in the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, one by the back entrance inside, and one by the ballroom entrance. And we'll also have a validation thing at the front desk. Somebody doesn't have ca uh, credit cards, yeah. or it doesn't work, they can pay that way. So if the public wants to park there like they do now? Yeah, they're going to pay. They're paying now. If they're Where do you pay then? Where do you pay if... Look, there's a box for the city. Okay. They, our, the city has so many that they can park in. And so people go up and they put their money or credit card in a little box yeah. and they put a ticket on their dashboard. And... and then when they have to pay in advance. And they put that on their dashboard, and they'll say, right. till yeah. 2 o'clock, and are the police come by at 2.10, and they give them a ticket. And then you can use that ticket to get out? Yeah, you, know, you take a ticket, it'll yeah. tell you what's your time, and you insert it when you leave, and it'll tell you how much you owe. It's just like you're going in a parking garage in Burlington. Yeah. Actually, here, the, the new garage will be with the same type of system. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you if it's full, if it's closed for the yeah. afternoon, if we have a big function, we'll close it off. Otherwise, it'll be open for public parking, just like always. Was it hotel guests park there free? Yeah. Or there may be a charge. I'm, we haven't settled on anything yet. Our tenants will have uh, the same type of card as the um, church. They will be able to access it and just, we're doing it so they can either do it with a phone, mm -hmm. uh, RFD, or tap it with a card mm -hmm. and go with it that way. What's the rate? I don't know. Don't know yet. Okay. It won't be a dollar an hour like the city. <laughs> I mean, we're subsidizing that. Nobody's subsidizing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it won't be that bad. But it may be progressive. Here over seven hours or something like that, it may start going up. That's what they're doing in a lot of the places now. It's to stop this overnight parking. We know this parking costs half in Barry, but it doesn't want to tell yeah. There's no business in Barry either, so come on. Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking, um, I am part of the Onion River Chorus, and we um, practice at the church right there, and everybody comes in through that back door and parks in that back area. So now they're going to be paying for parking at Well, the, the church, no, the church will give you so many tickets to come in with. They might have 50 or 100 tickets. We don't care how many they have. But after 12 people, right now there's no place to park. Uh, right. So, we, yeah, because if the rest of, you know, there's not a whole bunch of other. Yeah, if you've used your 12 there. spots up or 13 spots up, the 14th spot, if he wants to park in the lot, they'll have to pay when they leave. Mm -hmm. But if the 13th person leaves and the next person coming in, he can take that spot. He'll be allowed in. It just locks him in and out. This seems to be more than a design review thing. Oh, it, oh, yeah, no, it's going through more than just design review, but it also has to go through design review because it's in design review and we're adding yeah, the structure, yeah. we're adding the gates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't worry. It's it's not it's not right, a... I just... I, yeah. I, I just, oh, the it's... Parking issues seem beyond well, our well, and purview. That's I mean, the, looking at the design. Yep. Yeah. Nope, that's your, and that's, you don't need to worry about that. Really, all you need to worry about is the gates and the design aspects of the gates. Um, parking you know, issue, we've already, parking issue, we've got the problem. Yeah. And it's on private the, land. We the, just can't control it. So we're trying to control it now. You go down there tonight, you can't find a spot. We have a big function tonight. Yeah, the, the you know, rejiggering of how the 
traffic flow goes and all of that has already been dealt with through Department of Public Works in our office. The gates will open automatically for a siren. Police, fire, ambulance just have to bring their siren in and it'll open up automatically for them. And these will remain in place? This is, we're hoping that up until the time the garage gets started, then you won't need them. Okay. Then, <laughs> then you're going to have to put your money in the garage. These but fairly permanent locations you plan a long time before the garage gets built. Well, their city lawyer told us uh, two weeks ago that don't look for anything until 2023. And don't think you're going to start before 2024. And I can tell you if it's that long, you won't, probably won't see me waiting. I can't keep dumping money into something because two people want to hold it up. You know. Maybe you should paint his window so he can't see out the window. <laughs> the sad thing about it is the basis is the trucks can't turn around down it and below and they don't anyway. They can't now. They never did. Never did. They do have a new design for the uh, garage, by the way. And it's much, much smaller, much narrower, uh, pushed more onto our property. I think they're down just to lost about 10 spots from what I just saw. Uh, yes, and it's a preliminary. Well, in terms of the design of the gates, I don't have any problem with the design of the gates. No. Yeah, they're, um, they're gates. They're gates. Yeah. Although they will be the first, well, I was going to say they'll be the first gates in Montpelier, but that's not true. With that's the, with the, the, with the, the state house. The there used to be gates on yeah. that property mm -hmm. in 1980 when Anders and Kim Murray bought it. Yeah. They had them on both ends, and twice the same woman drove through them and broke them, <laughs> and the guys refused to put them back up again. They even had a, a, a box at the front entrance where they were collecting money with people going through. And that didn't last long either. Are they lit at night or just the reflective, so the headlights? They'll be reflective. Yeah, the box will be lit up so you can read and everything else. No, I mean the gate itself. So you're No, they're not a lit gate. They're just reflective. Just reflective. Yeah. I may put a small light at the, uh, on the exit uh, with a camera so that I can monitor. You know, it, People drive everything, you know, so. No, you're right. I've got to protect, unfortunately. I'd hate to. Questions, comments, suggestions? I'm, I'm fine with There's that. no landscaping, because I'm. we're just going to block it for now, but. Yes. All right. Landscape won't come with the garage and the hotel. Nobody has anything to add at this point. We can go through the criteria. Evaluation criteria number one preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure. Acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Eric, I saw the um, historic sites did a dig in three or four spots on our property for getting ready. And then they sent uh, back a historic description that they've gotten from Times Argus, wherever they got it from, starting back from the 1700s. It was like 30 pages, and I read it the other day. Those guys are really good at what they I mean, really amazing. And when it got to around the 1900s, my father-in-law used to tell me about some of these people, and I remember their names. Even J. Leo Johnson owned a prop couple of properties there. Well, the last two sentences said they unearthed a 1911 Vermont license plate. So I wrote to him. I says, is there any possibility I can get that plate for our hotel? Yeah, I'll send it to you. Oh, wow. they, they tried looking it up, but the records don't go back that far to see who the registration was. Oh, that's all right. That's, that's really great. Neat. You remember J. Leo Johnson? You remember him, don't you? The Chrysler Garage? Oh, yeah. It was a Chrysler Garage in the back along the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it used to be a... Uh, was a capital garage there for a while. Well, but that was over in the corner, and yeah. that was Malone's first garage, the father's first garage. 
and then this boy Malone took over, and then he opened up Woodbury Auto. Mm -hmm. But J. Leo Johnson had a Chrysler garage at the back of the building on the side of the tracks, and our family bought the Chrysler garage in the late 70s, and that's when they moved it up to Barry Montpelier Road and opened the Midtown. <laughs> the, uh... And they used to have a dry cleaning plant right next to it, and I forget who the guy, Adams, and then how, how dry cleaners bought it next. Remember, they owned the one up across from our laundromat on Main Street, how cleaners before he sold it. But what they, everybody did, they took their filters and their tripe and they put them outside on the ground. And that's why you have so many, why well, I've got 11 wells on my ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm amazed at the number of garages that used to be downtown where uh, the, the place where Necky is, the, right on the river, that was a garage. Was a garage and, uh, where the laundromat is on Berry Street. Yeah, that was a Chevrolet garage. Yeah. Do you, do you know where the do you know where the showroom was? The showroom for the garage, out there, in that building where the tattoo parlor is. Yeah. In my laundromat, they, they those windows were the overhead garage doors, and there were three in the back. Oh wow. And then they would drive the car in, and in the front of the building where my change machine was, there was a huge steel door that would slide out of, like a barn door, mm. and they would drive the car into the front window of the tattoo parlor. <laughs> that was a showroom. Oh. And that was Downey Chevrolet. <laughs> and then they bought the other one in Barry, and they combined it on the Barry Montpelier Road. The, uh, up, up in um, uh, Morrisville, there was a garage there. A guy about 90 ran it, and he had one car on the floor. And he'd drive that car, and then he'd order whatever he wanted, I guess. But it still had Model A and Model T tool boards up. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, now the Keene family owns it. What? Now the Keene family owns it. Yeah. Dan was from Montpelier. Done? Thank you. You're Thank all you set. Said. Good. So I think, I think, I don't know if Audra got the additional information I, she I sent her a whole bunch to you. There's really okay. no flood proofing to do these things because they're six inches above and then all the controls are six inches and it's bolted. Okay. Well, and it's, it's nothing but a steel cabinet. It's, yeah, they're you know, so GFI protected and then put in the building. Okay. So, yeah, you'll need to... My thing is trying to figure out a way to get Cat 6 wire out there from our building. Yeah. So we'll just have to tunnel underneath the sidewalks. It's okay, right? <laughs> Talk to Audra. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Fred. Go home Thank early. You, Fred. Go home early. <laughs> <laughs> Take you might, care. You might get some more of the bait still on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And in the minutes, it. we can't do the 21st, but there are three of us here for the four. Yes. So does anybody have any questions, comments, or changes to the no. November? Yes. The yes. Okay. Do, if you take a look at the adjournment thing, it says Eric made a motion to approve. Whoops. I think that means adjourned. Yeah. To adjourn. Thank you. Yeah. It's my favorite motion. <laughs> to approve or to adjourn? <laughs> I noticed With? in the congressional hearings that the chairman just he closes it. Closes it. And I think you ought to have that authority. <laughs> I don't have a hammer. <laughs> you could, could also one. time us. <laughs> yes. You could time us when we have comments. With with that change, do I hear a motion to approve so those minutes? Second. Second it. All in favor of the November the fourth minutes, raise your hand. Are approved. Awesome. And uh, giving us an update on the yeah a, a little one. Rigs. So uh, the planning commission made some final adjustments. Um, I don't have the revised draft, but um, the the historic preservation commission and planning commission went back and forth a bit on changes to the design, um, the definition for historic building, and pretty much stuck with the current definition of historic building. Um, there were some expansions on the overlay district, um, including so some tweaks that were just bringing in, you know, a couple of, of parcels to make sure that all of a neighborhood was part of the district, part of the neighborhood was part of it, bring in the rest of it. 
Um, I think probably one of the biggest changes was actually adding in all of your neighborhood up behind the state house. That was very confusing. To um, me. And getting added into had that, we ended up with that all added into the district, I, right? Yeah, I should I should have gone around the boundaries on there because they're sort of nothing. They don't match the national register boundaries or anything else. And, and I didn't look at it. Uh, I guess the, well, the, the the the. The neighborhood boundaries were designed to try and um, make sure neighborhoods were consistent, not just historically, but also when you came to, okay, this is a residential neighborhood, 80% of the houses in this neighborhood have similar setbacks or similar lot sizes. Um, and a similar char overall characteristics. So the, the neighborhoods for zoning purposes, aren't necessarily going to match with the historic districts. Um, but I think that having that as a basis for saying this is why this is all being pulled into design overlay, whether it's for historic purposes or not. I thought the Historic I mean, Preservation so. Commission and the Planning Commission were going to sit down and do this together, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen. So mm -hmm. I'm still a bit annoyed about that mm -hmm. because. Uh, I think we picked up most of the changes, but I was the only one that showed up to me. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, it was, I think, you know, I think it's going to be better. That doesn't mean that there can't be more work I, to I, tweak things and make, make things better later. I think we ought to look at those boundaries. I just haven't had... Yeah, I can. Reason. We can. We can do more of that in historic preservation for sure. Yeah. And try and you know pull design review committee members in as well as anybody wants yeah, to so come the, to it. Boundaries look like a southern gerrymander, <laughs> <laughs> and they're just yeah. they go zigzag all over. They're all over. I mean, it's not you know. But, so there, the plan is that the new design review regulations will have their first public hearing. Um, in front of Planning Commission in January. So they've got to have two pu two public hearings, I think, for Planning Commission, and then hopefully move forward to City Council. Hopefully there won't be a lot of public pushback and have them decide to rework it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you never know. It's not like anybody showed up at the Planning Commission discussions that we just time. had. No, nobody either time. No, no outside voices. No. I was reading the article in the newspaper about the, you know, they have a proposal before for the uh, uh, old armory mm. rec department. And I, th I think that's an historic building. I think it'd be, be helpful if the Preservation Commission were involved in that. Who should I talk to about that, Mike? Maybe it hasn't. I mean, it hasn't really come through our door at all yet. I yeah. don't know how much much Mike knows about it. I mean, mostly but, it, you can't. And, and they 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 missed it. I don't know was it a newspaper or uh, Redloaf missed. Uh, there's a major settlement problem at the rear of the building that they didn't talk about fixing. Hmm. As you can see, there's two big cracks that just. But, I mean, I, I, I looked at it 15 years ago. I don't think it's moved a lot. Hmm. But it's, it should be addressed structurally. Oh, yeah, but I, I don't know where they are or aren't. Uh, what's interesting, there's a shooting range mm -hmm. in that building. Well, it was an armory, so. Yeah, I expect that. In the that. basement, they had a, uh, a shooting range in the basement. My, my high that school had a shooting range and a bowling alley. Your high school did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big high school. Uh, 5,500 people. In oh, it. my God. Wow. Where were they? Where? Evanston, Illinois, just Good. north of Chicago. Oh. Slightly different to, world, huh? Yeah. Somebody had to set pins. Mm -hmm. They just had a mechanical pin setter. I would prefer to do, I prefer to do that than bowl. <laughs> 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 That's funny.
speaking of. <laughs> was that a motion to adjourn? It is. <laughs> Do I hear a second? I second it. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.